Wheat checks, rice checks, and good hot Ralston presents Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! <laughs> In today's transcribed adventure, Buzz and Happy have been locked in a building by two criminals who have blocked their only means of escape by pouring sodium-potassium alloy on the stairs. The liquid metal has burst into flame on contact with the air. Commander, the heat's terrible. We're going to face something worse than heat when the automatic fire extinguishing system starts to work. But, sir, the water will put the fire out and we can escape. Not with this alloy, Happy. It burns in air, but when water hits it, it explodes. What? The second that spray starts working, this whole building will be blown to bits. We'll be back in just a moment with today's Space Patrol story, The Lady from Venus. Space Patroller Dick Tufeld gang speaking to you from an atomic power plant on Mars. They're having trouble getting power, but I think I've found the trouble. Now, listen to this main power generator. Sounds pretty weak, doesn't it? My guess is this. They've been using ordinary fuel. So let's see what happens when I put in this super fuel. Wow, listen to that power now. Supercharging, does it? And gang, when you roll out of bed in the morning, you're just like this generator. You need fuel because you haven't had any for about 12 hours. But listen, don't settle for ordinary fuel. Get supercharged like Buzz Corey does with a good breakfast. Eat the super cereals in the checkerboard packages. Now, rice checks and wheat checks are the super cereals with that modern bite-sized design for super easy eating. Rice checks is bite-sized shredded rice, triple toasted. And wheat checks, wheat checks is bite-sized shredded wheat, baked crisper than a cracker, super power in every bite. Now remember, pulling up to the breakfast table is like pulling into a filling station. So get supercharged every morning. Pick up your cereal bowl and say, Fill up, Mom, wheat checks. Fill up, Mom. Rice checks. In Commander Corey's central office on Terra, a tall, middle-aged man anxiously paces the floor while Cadet Happy checks the Space Patrol search mission reports. There are some magazines on the table, Mr. Stratton. Hmm? Beg pardon? I said if you want to read, there are some magazines. Oh, no, no, thank you, Cadet. Is that clock correct? Yes, it is, Mr. Stratton. Are you sure? It's a uranium clock, sir. It gives the correct universal star time within a millionth of a second. Commander Corey did say 10.30, didn't he? Yes, sir. Huh, 10.40 now. Oh, here's the commander now. Well, sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Stratton. Oh, well, that's all right, Commander. The Secretary General and the staff have gone over your application and reports of the commission. Oh, yes? It's been approved. You can go ahead with that atomic power plant. Oh, splendid, splendid. These papers authorize you to obtain fissionable materials for your atomic breeder reactor. Mm, thank you. I suppose you're blasting off to Venus right away and get your plan into operation. Oh, I have a few matters to clear up first in my terror office. Goodbye, Commander. And, uh, Cadet, thank you for your courtesy. Well, that's all right, Mr. Stratton. Goodbye. Congratulations, Mr. Stratton. Oh? Uh, what can I do for you? Why, Mr. Stratton, you don't recognize me. Why, Miss Bennett, uh, forgive me, but uh, you look so different. Oh, don't tell me I've aged that much in five years. Oh, no, no, it's not that. It's a... I'm a blonde now instead of a brunette. Oh, yes, that's it, of course, your hair. And I dress more expensively than I did when I worked for you. I always thought you dressed very nicely, Miss Bennett. Why so formal, Edward? On Mars, you used to call me Elspeth, the lady from Venus. Yes. Uh, what are you doing now, Elspeth? Oh, that's better. Well, right now, I'm in the manufacturing business on my own. Well, we're competitors, eh? No, no, not entirely, Edward. In fact, I'm actually interested in becoming one of your customers. Oh, splendid. We parted on very unpleasant terms, as I recall. I'm glad you're willing to let bygones be bygones. Yes, and I was delighted to hear that the Secretary General gave you the go-ahead for your reactor on Venus. Why, I just came from Space Patrol headquarters myself. How did you know about it so soon? Oh, I know a lot of things about you, Edward. I was one of the people questioned by the Space Patrol security agents. Oh, evidently, your replies were favorable. Thank you. 
How soon will your plant be in operation? Well, it'll take three weeks to get into active production. Good, then I can count on you for a shipment of plutonium in less than a month. <laughs> I'm not joking, Edward. I'm ready to pay you a fair amount of credits for a small percentage of your plutonium output. Do you have a United Planets authorization to buy it? Oh, no. That's why I have to get it from you. But I can't sell it to you. I can sell you power, but not plutonium or other fissionable materials. It's illegal. Stratton, how long do you think you'd be permitted to operate that plant if I should go to Space Patrol with certain evidence? Evidence of those shady deals on Mars five years ago? You know I had nothing to do with those. You engineered them behind my back. Yes, but the evidence I have still points to you, not to me. I've been keeping it, Edward, for just such an opportunity as this. You know I've got to account for every ounce of plutonium. Surely you can find some way to get around the regulations. You want to keep that plant, don't you? That's blackmail, Elsa. Blackmail? When I'm paying you for the plutonium? Well, that's unfair. I never thought you'd stoop to anything like this. You'll send the plutonium to the Elbin Company on Mars. There's a fake company I've organized to receive certain illegal materials. So you're operating on Mars, no? No, no. I just want to be sure the plutonium's hard to trace. For your protection as well as mine, I'm still the lady from Venus. So I'll see you in a month. Remember, I'll be expecting my shipment in a month. Goodbye for now, Ed. You know what I'm going to do when we get to Lake Azure, Commander? What, Happy? I'm going to go for a swim, and then I'm going to the club and have a steak that thick. And oh, Wait a minute, go... Happy. There's one thing I forgot to tell you when we blasted off from Terra. What's that, sir? Officially, this is a pleasure trip. Unofficially, we're on official duty. Huh? I'm all confused. You remember the man Stratton who was in my office about a month ago, the fellow who was authorized to operate an atomic reactor plant on Venus? Oh, yes, sir. I remember Mr. Stratton. Uh, he ought to be producing by now. He's in some sort of trouble. We're going to Lake Azure and see if we can clear it up. What kind of trouble? Well, he's afraid to tell me by space of phone, so I arranged to visit him at his cottage in the north shore of the lake. Oh, then the swim and the steak are out. And until after we talk to Mr. Stratton, then we'll see about the swim and steaks. Because in the long run, I want to be sure that everybody thinks we're visiting Venus for pleasure. Just a minute. Oh, oh, Elspeth. Yes, Edward. I heard you were resting here at Lake Azure after getting your plant into operation, so I thought I'd pay you a visit. I... Well, aren't you going to ask us in? Mr. Stratton, this is my assistant, Ivan Almond. How do you do? Hello. Shake hands with him, Edward, or Ivan will think you don't like him. He's very sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> Shake, huh? <coughs> oh, easy, Ivan. Mr. Stratton will probably need his right hand to correct a little mistake he made. A uh, mistake? Yes. One of our representatives inside your plan informed us that you shipped a crate to the Elbin Company on Mars yesterday. Uh, that's right. I, I did. I, I followed your instructions. Yeah, except you didn't put plutonium in the crate. What a waste of time and money it would be for us to pick up that crate of worthless metal and haul it back to Venus. Oh, worthless metal? Yes. So I brought Ivan with me to persuade you to correct this oversight. You like me to work him over, Miss Bennett? Well, that's up to Mr. Stratton. Yes, I'll, I'll correct the oversight. Good. But the next time you make a mistake, Ivan will uh, work you over, as he calls it. And I'll turn my evidence over to the Space Patrol. It won't happen again. See that it doesn't. Come on, Ivan. All right, Miss Bennett. All right, Ivan. Let's get back to their water cruiser. Miss Bennett, look. There is another water cruiser pulling up to Stratton's wharf. Yes, men in uniform. Quick, get over behind those bushes before they see us. Uh, from here, they look like space patrol men. Exactly what they are. Lucky we beached our cruiser down at the cove. What are they coming here for? We're going to find out. Get in the bushes. We can watch from here. Hadn't we better get to the cruiser and shove off? Wait, Ivan. The tall one's Commander Corey. Yeah. I heard at the hotel that he was due in today for a rest. That Space Patrol High Breast has it pretty sus. If he's here for a rest, why would he come directly to see Stratton? It looks very suspicious to me. If he's double-crossed They us... are on the wharf now. Let's get going. No. Wait till they get in the house. Then we'll slip up and see if we can hear what's going on. 
No, Mr. Stratton, we didn't see anybody. And there was no boat at the wharf. Well, they must have come here in a surface car, then. They could have, all right, along the Lakeshore Road. Who were these people? Elspeth Bennett and a man named Ivan Armand. They're the reason I asked you to come here. They're trying to force me to sell them plutonium illegally. I see. One of their spies in my plant found out about a fake shipment I tried to trick them with, so they came here to threaten me. Threaten you? With violence, you mean? Yes, and... Well, Commander, I, I'm going to tell you the whole story. It may mean that the government might take my license away, but I'll not be blackmailed into committing a crime. Blackmail? How could they? Your record's clean. Uh, let me give you the facts. This uh, Elspeth Bennett worked for me five years ago on Mars. Without my knowledge, she put over several very dishonest deals. Here's exactly what she did. In order to make it look as though I were responsible, she faked a series of offers. Oh, well, he's blabbing the whole story. Uh, maybe Corey will not believe him, huh? Well, Space Patrol investigators, and we can't afford that. At any rate, we can't get any plutonium from Stratton now. Let's get out of here before Corey comes out. If Corey finds our plant, we're finished. Ivan, we've got to take care of Corey, the cadet, and Stratton. I can't handle all three of them. They are armed. I'll fix it so you can take the Space Patrolman by surprise. You wait in the bushes near the lakeshore. I'll pretend to be in trouble. While they're rescuing me, you can jump out and overpower them. You know, Commander, somehow I think Mr. Stratton was telling the truth about being framed. Oh, so do I, Happy. If he weren't thoroughly honest, he could have sold radioactive materials illegally. Yet he's willing to risk losing his plant. Help! Right. Help! Hey, Commander, listen. It's a woman. She's fallen into the lake. Come on, Happy. Save me. I can't swim. We're coming, lady. Here, yeah, I'll jump in, sir. Oh, wait, Happy. She isn't far out. Grab the end of this stick. Uh, that's it. Uh, get a good grip. You're going to be all right. Just hang on. We'll pull you in. Oh, thank goodness you're hurting the car. I've got her, sir. Yeah, watch the edge of the bank, Happy. It's not very solid. That's, that's how I fell in. Here, I'll give you a hand, Happy. We'll have you out in just a second. Oh, I, I didn't realize the water was so deep, so close to the shore. There. There you are. Now, don't try to get up for a while. Just rest. And you rest, too, Ruby! Hey, what's the big idea? I got them both, Miss Bennett, just like you said. Well, there's no time for gloating, Ivan. Go in the house, get Stratton, and bring him out here. Well, maybe I'd better finish Cody and the cadet now. Oh, huh? Give Stratton a chance to get away? No. Somebody's going to find three bodies here by the lake. Corey, the cadet, and Stratton. And they'll find the evidence against Stratton in Corey's pocket. Yeah, but the evidence is fake. Well, of course it is, but no one will suspect it. It'll be obvious to everyone that Stratton did away with him to keep from being exposed. How are you going to explain Stratton? Why, Corey wounded him in the fight. Now, get Stratton. Uh, suppose the cadet come to while I'm gone. Either one of them moves, this heavy stick will take care of them. We'll be back with Space Patrol in just a moment. Say, gang, what do you need for a good, good morning and a good, good start? A nourishing breakfast with rice checks or wheat checks. That's what. The super cereals that help to supercharge you. Uh-oh, here's a chance to show you exactly what I mean. Some of the fellows here in the neighborhood are having a race. They're running right in this direction, and way out in front is Jim Bridwell, a boy that makes it a rule to eat a good breakfast with the super cereals. Listen, here they come. And let me tell you, Jim is going to win because he's supercharged. I won! There, Jim did win, which just goes to show you that to be a winner, you have to eat a winner's breakfast. So latch on quick, gang, to rice checks and wheat checks, the super cereals that helped us supercharge you. Hi, Space Patrol. Hi, Jim. Nice job of running you did there. Supercharged, that's me. That's what I was telling the gang, that you eat the super cereals. I sure do. Rice checks and wheat checks. You just can't find another cereal like them. Right you are, because they're the only modern bite-sized cereal anywhere. And talk about delicious. Mmm, boy. Get them today, Space Patrollers. Rice checks, wheat checks. Edward Stratton, operator of an atomic reactor plant on Venus, is being blackmailed by a former employee, Elspeth Bennett, into selling plutonium illegally. Buzz and Happy went to Lake Azure on Venus to get Stratton's report and were knocked unconscious by Elspeth's assistant, the burly Ivan Amund. Now, while Ivan goes to bring Stratton out of his lakeside cottage, Buzz and Happy regain consciousness to find Elspeth standing over them with a heavy club. Don't get any ideas about rushing me. I've got you covered. Commander, look. 
She's holding the same stick we used to pull her out of the water. If you think I won't use it, just make a move to get up. Oh, Cadet, what are you looking so pop-eyed about? Look, right over your head. There's a snake hanging from that tree limb. Oh, no, really? Don't try any childish tricks on me. He's right, Miss Bennett. And it's a poisonous snake. Oh, who do you think you're fooling? We're not fooling. You'd better move, Miss Bennett. And you'd better not, Commander. It's ready to strike. And so am I. L- look out, Commander. I <laughs> warned you, Commander. <laughs> Let go of that stick. I was hoping you'd say at me. Now give me that towel. I don't want to hurt you. There. If you, if you hadn't ducked, I'd have fixed you good. Yeah, and if the commander hadn't yanked you forward, something would have fixed you for good. Look what's on that branch. What? Oh, it, it is a snake. Oh. I've got her hat. Oh, one minute she's swinging a club at us, and the next she faints dead away. Mm, women are sure temperamental. At least this one is. You know, Commander, if that snake had bitten Miss Bennett, I'm afraid it would have been one sick snake. Uh, There's no time for jokes, Happy. We've got to save Stratton. Come on. I hope we're in time. Commander. Stratton, are you all right? Yes, I'm all right. Where's Ivan? He saw you coming, hit me, and then ran out the back door. Stratton. Miss Bennett is out by the lake. Watch her till we get back. Come on, Happy. Let's see if we can pick up Ivan's trail. Wait, Ivan. Miss Bennett, I thought they captured you. I saw Corey and the cadet run toward the cottage. No. Corey struck me and thought I was unconscious. Ivan, did you finish Stratton? No. I didn't have a chance. Corey and the cadet arrived too soon. Miss Bennett, we'd better get in the boat and shove off. Corey may have trailed me through the brush. All right, let's get across the lake to our spaceship. Help me into the boat. This brush sure is thick. Yes. Some of these small branches are broken. Ivan's heading for the lake. Do you think he'll try to swim it, sir? He might. He might have had a boat beached along here. Commander, look at these footprints. They lead right out to the water. There's two sets, a man's and a woman's. Uh, Miss Bennett must have come out of her faint. Look out there, halfway across the lake. A water cruiser with two people in it. They're going at full speed. By the time we get to our boat at the wharf, they'd be out of sight. Get back to Stratton's cottage and space a phone and alarm. I'm sorry that Bennett woman got away. I got to the lake shore, she was gone. Don't worry, Mr. Stratton. The commander's alerting the lake patrol. She won't get very far. I don't think she was planning to destroy us all in cold blood. Elspeth's always been a determined woman. But I had no idea she was so utterly ruthless. I just talked to the manager of the Lake Azure Hotel. Neither Ivan nor Miss Bennett were registered there. But the manager recognized their descriptions. They've been hanging around there the last couple of days. They must have been picking up information. I've alerted the lake patrol in Venus City headquarters. Mr. Stratton, do you have any idea where Miss Bennett's factory is? No, other than she hinted it somewhere here on Venus. So what's the name of it? I don't even know that. I was supposed to ship the plutonium to the Elbin Company on Mars. It's a fake outfit she uses just to acquire illegal materials. The Elbin Company. Chances are she must do quite a bit of business under that name. I'll have Space Patrol units contact all spaceports and shipping centers to see if there's any freight on hand for the Elbin Company. Mr. Stratton, you'd better come with us to Venus City. Until we capture Elspeth Bennett and Ivan, your life is in danger. Miss Bennett, the plants are in the other direction. You are way off Vector. We're not going to the plant right now. We're going to Venus City to pick up some freight. What for? There's an electromagnetic pump waiting to be picked up, and it's got the Elbin Company name on it. Sooner or later, Corey's going to trace us through the Elbin Company. But, Miss Bennett, we can't get a magnetic pump in this ship. It's too small. We'll hire a surface truck from the warehouse and drive to the plant. There's another ship there. We'll pick up some documents I need and then blast off for Jupiter. Corey will never find us. We're about two minutes out of Venus City, sir. Shall I contact Space Control? I'll handle it, Hap. Space Patrol Headquarters, Venus City. Calling Commander Corey. Corey here. Go ahead. Uh, Commander, we've already got a development on that Elbin Company checkup. Good. Let's have it. Warehouse number three has had a large piece of machinery on hand assigned to the Elbin Company. An electromagnetic pump was picked up just a few minutes ago. Does anybody at the warehouse know where the Elbin Company is located? No, not exactly, but from other dealings, they think it's southeast of Venus City, out toward the Topaz River. 
man and a woman rented a big Atomo surface truck from the warehouse. Get the Atomo truck registration number. Alert all highway patrol units to watch for it. And not to stop it, just report its location and direction. Yes, Commander. Corey out. Well, we won't land at Venus City, Happy. We'll cruise around until we get a report on that truck. I've got the Atomo truck in the viewscope, sir. It's the only vehicle on the highway for miles. Yeah, that must be it, then. Check that chart of the Topaz River region. Yes, sir. What manufacturing concerns are marked there? Well, there's only one, sir, but it doesn't say what it is. Well, when the truck arrives, we'll be there. You know, Miss Bennett, I've got to admit I didn't think much of this plan at first. But we sure got Corey off of our trail now. With that electromagnetic pump out of the warehouse, there's nothing on Venus to give him a hint where our plant is. Uh, what about the spaceship we left at the freight yard? The false registration will throw Corey even further off the trail. Do you want to go to the administration building first and get those papers? No, stop here, by the reactor equipment building. What for? Just stop the truck. I'm going to leave orders for my men to get rid of all equipment which might connect this plant with illegal radioactivity work. We'll go in here and take a quick inventory. Oh, I can tell you what is in there. A container of sodium potassium coolant, heat exchanger, a receiving Yes, tank. yes, I know, but I don't want any slip-ups. Come on, get out. Well, it's going to be a job to dispose of all that, and a real shame to destroy it. It'll just be hidden. A few months from now, I'll set up a plant on another planet. Nobody's going to stop the lady from Venus. I can promise you that. Now, come on. All right, Miss Bennett. Ivan, stay where you are. Corey! Quick, into the building. Stop! Quick, open the door. Uh, Up the stairs. We can cross to the next building with a catwalk. There they go, sir. Up the stairs. Come on, let's get them. It's stuck. We're coming up the steps, stop. You're cornered. Better come down. I don't know. Thick containers. Roll them down the stairs. Okay. Uh, better get off the steps. Well, watch it, Commander. Duck up. <laughs> Shall I roll this one now? Ivan, wait. Don't roll it. Open the valve and let it pour down the stairs. Huh? Tip it over and point the valve towards them. Hurry. Commander, what do you suppose she's up to? I don't know. Sodium potassium coolant. It's used in atomic breeder reactors to carry off heat from the reactor core. When it's exposed to air, it will burst into flames. Turn the valve, Ivan. There it goes. Stand back, Happy. Now let's see you come up those stairs. Commander, the heat, it's awful. All right, Ivan, get that door open. Yes, Miss Bennett. Happy, we can't get up through that flaming liquid, and they can't get down. We'll go outside. I'm sorry, Commander, you won't be leaving. <laughs> She's closed the door. The electronic control switch is up here. Uh, it's no use, Cadet. You can't open that door. I got this one open, Miss Bennett. We're leaving you now, Commander. No, oh, by the way, there's an automatic fire extinguishing system in here. In a minute or two, water will be sprayed all over that sodium-potassium alloy. And that's your life. Come on, Ivan. We haven't got much time. Hey, did you hear that, Commander? The sprinkling system will, will put the fire out. And if it works if quickly... the sprinkling system starts, we're finished. Huh? This coolant has to be kept in a closed airtight system. It burns in there, but when water hits it, it explodes violently. All these containers will blow up. But Commander, we've got to get out of here. Now look, there's an electronic hoist. The chain runs up to that pulley, fastens the beam. That hoist will lift us high enough. We can swing over to the balcony and get out the way they did. Grab the hook. I'll throw the switch. Yes, sir. Get a good grip. And I'll hold the chain and kick the switch with my foot. <laughs> It's working, sir. We're going out. Start swinging. When we're level with the balcony, jump. Yes, sir. Hey, the sprinkling system. It started to work. Let's hope the water doesn't hit that coolant till we get out of here. Jump, Happy. <clears throat> Quickly, out the door across the catwalk. There it goes. Three whole buildings blown to bits. Yes, and Commander Corey along with them. Now, come on, let's get to the ship. Let's use my ship. It's close. Corey! Hold it, Ivan. Corey, you couldn't have escaped. Uh, but we did, which is something that's never going to happen to a certain lady from Venus. Yes, sir, Commander. When she teamed up with Ivan Amon, it sure was an evil omen. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 
We'll be back with an action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol story in just a moment. Jumpin' Jupiter, gang, here's a five-star bulletin from Buzz Corey. It's coming over the teletype here in the newsroom of Terra's biggest newspaper, the Outer Space Dispatch. Here, I'll read it to you hot off the news tape. It says, Gang, don't take a chance those cold winter mornings. Get a start for the day that keeps you moving. Eat a breakfast that whips you into action. A good breakfast with good hot Ralston, the hot super cereal that helps to supercharge you. That's instant Ralston, the delicious wheat cereal. Remember, I can't take a chance. I have to get supercharged every day. That's why I eat a good breakfast with instant Ralston, a breakfast that supercharges me. You can't take a chance either, boys and girls. So my advice to you is this. Get supercharged every day. That's it, gang. That's Buzz Corey's message to you. So do what your commander says. Eat a good breakfast with good hot Ralston and get supercharged. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol story. Buzz and Happy are in the lower shaft of a secret mine on Saturn's sixth moon. As they wade through the water of the partly flooded shaft, the sound filters down through the mine. Happy, listen. Yeah, sounds like a motor of some kind. It must be back outside the opening. The mine's pump engine. Pump? Oh, automatic, I guess. Yeah. When the water reaches a certain level, it cuts on. Hey, wait a minute. Look at the water level against the wall of the shaft. Watch it. It looks like it's rising. Oh, that pipe. It isn't drawing water out. It's forcing it in. Happy, somebody at the mine opening reversed the pumps. They're trying to drown us. Be sure to be with us next Saturday for the exciting story, The Last Voyage of Lonesome Lena, when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again brings you Space Patrol! <laughs> And now, a message from Commander Buzz Corey. Boys and girls, to donate blood, you have to be at least 18 years of age. But to be a Space Patrol blood booster, well, age doesn't matter. I need all of you, and all of you can join. Our job is to get more people to donate blood to the Red Cross. It's a swell way to help your country, and we have a lot of fun doing it. So, how about it? How about joining my Space Patrol blood boosters today? <laughs> Space Patrol, an original Mike Moser production starring Ed Kemmer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston and directed by Larry Robertson. Other players were Baylor Kovach, Ken Mayer, Virginia Hewitt, and David Duval. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present... The new exciting Space Patrol! And be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol story on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper.